Hi all, welcome to my talk on central bank digital currencies, the future of money. I'm going to proceed by well, talking to you a bit about central bank digital currencies, which, as all of you know, is actually a very current and hot topic like worldwide, not just in, in Asia, Europe, it's like a hot topic everywhere. Um, I'm sure that all of you heard a lot and read a lot in the media about CBDCs. But what are actually central bank digital currencies? Central bank digital currencies are nothing else but a digital version of the central bank money that we already have. So, in other words, the digital euro, for example, is going to be nothing else but a digital version of the euro, in the same way that the digital Chinese yuan is going to be nothing else but a digital version of the yuan. So, a CBDC, in order to actually be a CBDC, needs to meet two different criteria, two basic criteria. Those two like, are compulsory. The first one is the fact that all CBDCs need to be digital. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about central bank digital currencies. And the second criteria that they need to meet is the fact that CBDCs need to be a liability against a central bank. And this is so because, aside from being digital, CBDCs are central bank money. In other words, when I say central bank money, I'm talking about money which has been issued by a central bank. The euro, for example, as I said before, the yuan, it's issued by a central bank. It's a liability against a central bank. So the CBDCs are going to be the same. The same idea is going to apply to them. So this concept, as you can see, seemed quite uh, Easy. However, it's not actually that simple because unlike physical notes and coins, CBDCs are what we call programmable money. You cannot, I mean, a central bank cannot program a note or a coin to add or remove certain technical features. However, it is possible to do so when it comes to CBDCs because they are digital. So each central bank is going to design to decide how to design its CBDCs depending on its central bank's interests and policies. So, for example, let's say that a central bank wants to focus more on promoting financial inclusion. That central bank is going to design its CBDC uh, putting their focus precisely on promoting financial inclusion. So technically speaking, central banks are going to be able to do many things with CBDCs. However, before moving forward, before making it to the rational part, to analyzing what CBDCs uh, may be used for, etc., we need to focus on trying to see what CBDCs are, which I already explained uh, before, but especially why CBDCs are not cryptocurrencies. What makes CBDCs different from cryptos? Because I'm sure that all of you read on the media uh, news like, for example, um, well, China's cryptocurrency, uh, this country's Bitcoin, but actually this is completely false. A CBDC is not a cryptocurrency. Technically speaking, there might be some connections. CBDCs, technically speaking, adopt some features from cryptocurrencies. This is undoubtedly. However, they are not the same. For starters, the rationale behind CBDCs and that of cryptocurrencies is actually the opposite. While cryptocurrencies are the flagship of this new movement known as DeFi, decentralized finance, CBDCs are actually, as I said before, central bank money. So in other words, while cryptocurrencies precisely aim to not being controlled to an extent, CBDCs are actually the opposite. Being central bank money means that CBDCs are issued by a central bank and controlled by a central bank, much more controlled even than traditional coins and notes. Because when it comes to traditional coins and notes, a central bank could print those, could mint those, but to some extent, it's not, it wasn't that easy for a central bank to keep like an absolute track of all the notes that they printed. However, when it comes to CBDCs, it's going to be very simple for a central bank to keep track of the whole flow, to keep track of where uh, this payment uh, has been made and for what, which raises some privacy issues and concerns 
but uh, well, I'm not going to dwell on this part for now. So as you could see, CBDCs are not cryptos because they have a different rationale and also because of um, a much more practical um, aspect, which I know it's not like completely accurate, but still, uh, let me say that uh, CBDCs are going to be central bank money, as I said. Therefore, we are going to use them on a daily basis when finally rolled out and deployed. However, when it comes to cryptocurrencies, their, uh, their purpose is a bit different. It's true that cryptocurrencies may be used and are actually being used to making payments worldwide. I mean, for example, we saw companies uh, in the US like PayPal and many others worldwide starting to accept cryptocurrencies to make uh, payments. So, I mean, this is true. But in most cases, most people buy and sell cryptocurrencies as an investment to make a profit from them. They are not, at least yet, replacing like uh, physical uh, cash and notes anywhere. Whereas the goal of CBDCs is precisely that one, to be not perhaps to replace entirely, but at least to be like a, an alternative, a complement to the traditional banks and notes, ba uh, bank notes or in coins that we already have. So um, this is like the main, uh, the first and main distinction that I need to make, the difference between CBDCs and cryptocurrencies. Then there is also like a second distinction that I need to make, and this is actually very important as well. You may be wondering, am I not like already using CBDCs to some extent? I mean, whenever my salary is paid to my bank account, it's paid digitally. You don't actually see that money physically. I mean, your company doesn't come to you, like offering a bag of money. I mean, it's paid digitally to your uh, bank account. Most likely, you are going to make to pay all your bills digitally as well. You're going to make any transfer digitally. So am I not like already using CBDCs to some extent? I mean, what, what differences are going to be between what I'm doing now and this future that I mentioned uh, that, that CBDCs is going to, to, uh, to bring me? Well, the thing is, while uh, real central bank money is actually a um, component of the monetary base and therefore a liability against a central bank, this kind of digital transactions that we are already ma making, um, for example, when, when um, getting our salary paid, etc., are nothing else but debits and credits or pluses and minuses between two different payment uh, providers. Uh, for example, our, um, our bank account and uh, our credit card uh, payment company. So as you can see, there is a difference because that those transactions that we are already doing are not CBDCs. Whereas this new idea that I mentioned before are actually CBDCs. So um, now that we know a bit more about what CBDCs are and what CBDCs are not, cryptos, we should also uh, wonder um, how are CBDCs going to coexist with uh, cryptos or maybe I should say, are they going to coexist at all? This is actually a question that people ask me all the time because, well, I know it may seem confusing, like are CBDCs being created to replace cryptos, to fight against them, to coexist? Well, the thing is, to me at least, CBDCs and cryptos are actually um, different ideas, as I said before. I mean, they are different uh, concepts. Uh, they serve a different uh, purpose, which means that they may or may not coexist depending on each central bank, on each government's interests. I mean, in other words, it may be perfectly possible for a country to adopt a tough stance towards cryptocurrencies while promoting their own CBDC. It may also be perfectly possible for a country to prom create and promote a CBDC while promoting cryptocurrencies while being much more crypto friendly. I mean, all the combinations are possible. One doesn't exclude the other one. And this is so because, as I said, one thing is central bank money and the other one is uh, this uh, flagship you know, of this DeFi movement uh, designed for different, uh, to serve different purposes than that of, crypto, of uh, CBDCs. So as you can see, they may or may not coexist depending on each central bank's interests, but it is perfectly possible for them to do so. We may see in the future, for example, a digital euro in Europe or digital US dollar in the US coexisting with privately issued cryptocurrencies. This is perfectly possible. It's just going to be one more option for people to make uh, payments. You no, know? I mean, people will be able to choose between physical cash, 
a CBDC, also uh, cryptocurrencies. So as you can see, uh, this is part of this new uh, future of money. You know? I mean, it's going to be a much um, broader uh, system. Then it's also going important to remark how um, what the main rationale behind cryptocurrencies is. As I said before, cryptocurrencies may be designed to serve different purposes. One of them, for example, is the one that I mentioned before, promoting financial inclusion. But cryptos may as well be used, sorry, CBDCs, may as well be designed and deployed to, for example, replace physical banknotes. This has actually been a very relevant uh, topic during the pandemic, since uh, touching physical notes and coins may be a, sor a source of infection, uh, well, people have uh, been a bit more reluctant to use them. This is why many people have, been, uh, have become much more keen to adopting uh, digital versions of money. This, replacing physical bank notes and coins, is actually one uh, of the possible rationales behind CBDCs. However, to me, this is not the main one. There are many more uh, deeper reasons. One of them, financial inclusion, of course, but you could also cite um, controlling monetary policy much more efficiently. Uh, CBDCs may also be used as a tool to improve financial stability. CBDCs may also be used to uh, fight uh, financial crime. CBDCs may also be used by certain countries to try to uh, increase the amount of cross-border transactions using their own currency, etc., etc. So, for example. When we talk about um, deploying a CBDC in areas like Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, perhaps their main interest or their main focus should be on promoting financial inclusion. Whereas in other cases, for example, the current tests in China with the digital yuan, we see that their main focus has been put on trying to promote the RMB for cross-border payments in order to try to convert some of the e US dollar denominated transactions into ERMB denominated ones. So as you can see, this is actually a very wide uh, world with, which offers like many options. And just before finishing, I just wanted to remind you that the country in the world whose CBDC project is much more advanced is China, at least when it comes to major economies, because the Bahamas already deployed their Sun dollar, uh, which is a CBDC last year. But when it comes to major economies, China is the most advanced one. But it doesn't mean that it's the only one analyzing or testing this uh, topic. Uh, Europe will test quite likely its digital euro as well. In Asia, we see many more projects. In, in, um, in Thailand, uh, Philippines, um, Singapore, Cambodia, Japan, Korea. So CBDCs are becoming uh, actu well, actually an international um, object of interest. And this is so because to me, CBDCs are a key component of what we could call the future of money and the future of payments. Thank you very much for attending my talk today. Feel free to connect with me uh, on LinkedIn, for example, in the case you want to, um, want to ask me any questions uh, after this event. Thank you very much.